So one of the first things you might be wondering exactly is, what is a watershed? Well, a watershed is defined as an area of land in which all the water in that area drains into one body of water. And a watershed doesn't include just the water, but also the vegetation, the soils, land water interactions, and even human communities within the area. So to kind of demonstrate what a watershed is and issues associated with the watershed, we have this really cool model over here, which we're going to use. So there's four main issues we're going to be demonstrating with this model. But this is like a developed residential area, and this area is a golf course, so there's lots of fertilizers used, there's pesticides and herbicides, and when this is all used in excess and the land can't hold it all, when it rains, for example, it's all going to go and drain into this water. So this whole thing is a watershed, and the first area of concern is this golf course. So the second area that we're looking at is the farmland over here. So there can be high use of fertilizers and pesticides and herbicides for growing crops. And also improper plowing of fields can leave loose soil and improper containment of manure. So then when it rains or if it's windy, these things can get blown into the water. So another area of concern is deforested land. So forests will naturally act as a filter for stormwater runoff. And it filters out the pollutants so that it doesn't end up reaching the lake. They also reduce the erosion that occurs and stops some flooding. So when deforestation occurs, all the pollutants and loose soil contaminates the lake. Lastly, we have um, industrial areas such as this factory here. Um, when industrial waste is let into a stream or a river or any water body, obviously it should be treated. So if it's not treated, such as sewage, it can go directly into the water and into the water basin. So when it rains, this is what happens to our water. As you can see, all our pollution is going right into the basin of the watershed. Pretty gross. Yeah, so. so this ends up contaminating the lake and the drinking water, and the prevention of these issues is controlled by watershed management organizations. We're going to look at the pros and cons of both types of management. So I'm going to start with the cons of conservation authorities. So one of the major cons is that the community is not as well involved as they are in grassroots organizations. And the community also has less input and they're less informed. So with conservation authorities, the information is there, but it's more as if you want it, you have to go look for it. Whereas grassroots organizations pretty much exist for the purpose of educating the public. So the information is right there for you. Conservation authorities also do a lot of focus on stormwater and flood prevention. So they do other things as well too, but flood is often on the top priority list all the time. And conservation authorities will also add an additional layer of bureaucracy and politics since they are affiliated with the government. So some pros for conservation authorities is that they have a huge amount of funding which results in a lot of professional staff so they can do their own research. Uh, they have a large, large amount of projects due to the amount of funding they have. So this involves, they can do, do projects in areas such as watershed science, habitat re rehabilitation, and research into species at risk and invasive species. Additionally, they have control over their own jurisdiction, so they're able to make in informed choices based on the information they have, and if needed, they can make active des decisions on what goes on within their watershed. Alright, so some of the cons of grassroots approaches are that they have less of funding available to make like watershed programs to and monitor, monitor the effects on the watershed. They also have no real decision making abilities in the watershed, therefore they have to kind of de depend on other organizations to make the decisions for them, even though they may know best about what's happening in their area. They also have to rely on third party information and can't really do any of their own monitoring approaches. So pros for grassroots organizations, they have less bureaucracy, they are based on com community involvement, so there's more initiative within the community, and the organizations are all based on enthusiasm within the community, which <laughs> creates a good atmosphere. <laughs> um, the community is also able to influence what projects and programs they want the organization to focus on, which is really important. So what's happening within the community is what the people want rather than what some people sitting in another city somewhere else decide they want. Um, so grassroots are have the pro of being based on the community. <laughs> okay, so that still doesn't really say which one is better. So we think that the 
Uh, most important factor in determining which management approach should be used is based on the area and community in question, so specific to the area. So for example, the size of the area should be considered, as well as the funding, so the money that the municipalities have to put into the management of the watershed, since conservation authorities take so much more money than a grassroots organization. Uh, the attitude of the community and the community's attitude towards the government is also important since certain communities may not want the influence of the government and the additional bureaucracy. And uh, whether the area is rural or urban may also be important as we may often think as rural areas as being more inclined to take a community grassroots approach. And another important thing to consider is the amount of flooding in the area. So conservation authorities were originally mainly established to deal with flooding and they still deal a lot with this today. So if an area is in low risk of flooding, they may not have a requirement for a conservation authority. So for example, in Muskoka, they have low risk of flooding, so this is one of the main reasons why there's not a conservation authority in this region. But if there is a high risk of flooding, the municipalities may want to put the resources into having a conservation authority. So also since grassroots organizations are pretty much based uh, on volunteers and they can't function without the volunteers, the interest of the community for involving themselves in the organization is going to be very important. So the overall attitude of the community should also be considered. And so how involved do you think the community is going to want to be? So all of these factors will come together and will be specific for an area to determine which approach should be used. All right, so this research project was basically a comparison between the different watershed management organizations in Ontario. But grassroots organizations can occur worldwide whereas conservation authorities are only found in Ontario. So to expand this into future areas of research, they might want to expand on the comparison and look at what, what happens in other areas, such as internationally or in the rest of Canada, and see, try and determine what, what's the best watershed management prod method and if there are some that are more successful than others. All right, so we would like to thank our advisor, Catherine Lindsay, for help, all the help she gave us and for letting us use her watershed model.